Welcome to the Pretty Intense Podcast. Today is pretty intense for sure. I mean, the, the guest is Matias De Stefano, and he's a guy that remembers all of his past lives. He just knows the history of the planet with Atlantis and Lemuria and Egypt and, you know, all the places that are just so interestingly ancient. And he remembers all that stuff. But I gotta say, that's not really what we talked about. What we talked about was, I say it's pretty intense, but it actually was a really peaceful conversation. You know, we got to the point of what this reality is about, like what we're here to do and what created us and and how we evolve. Well, the message is just so peaceful, but also like riveting and fascinating and informational. He just is able to connect the dots. I loved the conversation. It went in ways that I didn't think it would go. I thought we'd spend the entire time talking about who built the pyramids and those things, which you can definitely find that. Like he's talked about that on other podcasts. But today was a lot of information that I'm going to be honest with you. I've listened to a lot of his stuff and I have not heard the stuff we talked about today. Enjoy the peaceful information that hopefully it brings to you. Please hit subscribe and the bell for notifications. I'm curious what your thoughts are about the episode and how the information like lands with you. Fill me in in the comments. I love to read those and enjoy this episode with Matthias. Today's pretty intense partner is Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted to nourish my gut health. I wanted to have more energy. I wanted to add more micronutrients to my body. I take it first thing in the morning before I have coffee and then before I go work out. It makes me feel so good. I'm giving my body the nutrition it craves. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and get five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash pretty intense. That's drinkag1.com slash pretty intense. Check it out. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to talk to you for so long. The amount of hours that I've spent listening to, God, it was a couple of years ago that I feel like I was listening to a podcast that you were on. And I don't know if it was Aubrey's or not. It's you've done mo you've done a lot with Aubrey and it might have yeah. been one of his. I remember being like so fascinated and especially by like dimensions and your explanation and I was like, "Oh my god, this guy is fascinating. Today, I was with uh, Robert Grant. I know. Yeah, and, and he, told, he, he mentioned you. And I said, I think I have a call with her today. And I said, no way. So it was like, it was like all combined. Soul families feel like they're uniting. I feel like there's like ancient soul families like really finding each other. Yeah, and now it's faster. It's getting very fast. Yes. Why is that? Well, it's basically because um, the planet now, it's tuning to a frequency that everyone can be connected to. Uh, before, everything was like cut, like disconnected. And it's a natural process of disconnection and going to sleep and waking up. That's a, that's a natural process in the planet. Uh, it's like a long winter, let's say, oh. a, a long invernation. Uh, I hibernation of um, of of consciousness. Um, so now everything is waking up again, and it speeds the way we are connecting to one another. So um, as more people wakes up, suddenly the frequency starts to connect all the people that usually were connected um, again. So uh, it's a faster connection today. What will be the, what is the point of the connection happening? What will happen as a result of that? Well, the, it's not that there is a goal. Um, like, for example, uh, I like to compare it with the seasons. So it's, it's like uh, we are coming from a winter. So that means that we are starting a spring. And the point of spring basically is to produce flowers that opens in order to reproduce and create more seeds and fruits that can produce seeds that can sow and then create more trees and expand the, the forest and expand 
um, the pollination and suddenly more animals can grow and more life can be expanded. But it doesn't mean that it will be always like that. So summer will be to enjoy it, to, to, to enjoy what we have been creating and sowing during the, the spring. And then autumn, which is the death of that system, in order to restore energy so all the plants go inside again, we have to get into hibernation in order to process that information and rest for a period of time that can be disconnected from all the rest hmm. of the environment because you have to go to the process within. And then again, spring. So what is the purpose of connection? It's basically because now we reach a moment in, uh, not in humanity, but in the planet uh, history that we start to leave spring again. So in the mind concept of, um, of this planet, in the mind or in the consciousness seasons of this planet, we are beginning again with spring. So that's why we are waking up, we are blossoming again and uh, showing our potentials to everybody, trying to open what was hidden within to the outside. So it's like a lot of flowers opening so we can recognize each other better now. I like to look at a lot of things in the way that they happen as being sort of fractal in nature, that there's the seasons within our own year, but then there's like a, a, a larger fractal aspect of the seasons that might be a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Is that kind of how what you're referring to as a season? Yeah, you, and you can divide the four seasons, for example, you can divide them in 24,000 years. So you have fractals of a long time of period, like you are maybe 5,600 years in winter and then 5,600 years in spring. So um, now we are starting spring and spring doesn't start in one day, even if there is an equinox that says to you, <laughs> yeah. spring is started. Actually, yeah. many flowers start to blossom like a few weeks before and others start to blossom like a month after that day. So we can, we can tell that because of all the awakening process that we have been living since 100, 100, 150 years ago, like um since since early um since the 20th century or late 19th century uh humanity started to wake up very fast and um and even if for us today everything looked like weird and crazy and uh dark in the 18th and, and the 19th century actually was the beginning of the waking up so it's it was the beginning of the spring Hmm. And it, it took 200 years um, of the beginning of the spring. So um, that's why most of the change that we have been living in this, in this past 200 years has been the beginning of what we are living now. Yeah. And we have the contrast now to waking up so it does look dark. Yeah. Uh, the darkness that we see, that we perceive, is because there is so much light now that you can see the mess that we have done for 5,000 years. <laughs> um, you, it's, like, it's like you have been kind of blind inside a room and you have been putting all the furniture and, and all the, uh, the papers, you were throwing it away because you had no idea where to put the stuff. And suddenly someone starts to open the window and you suddenly say, oh my gosh, this is a mess. Yeah. But because it's not because today is a mess. It's because you have been creating this mess for 5,000 years and suddenly now you see it. Yeah. It's not that it, this is not a dark time. This is a light time. So you can now become aware of all the things that we have been doing. So what are we that we have these cyclical seasons? Like, what are we? Why does that even happen? Well. Everything is a cycle in the reality. So everything is like a heartbeat. Everything lives period process. Um, in, in, the, in the universe, you have like four beats uh, that 
um, measures every process through time, which is expression, experimentation, integration, and transcendence. So everything in the universe express itself. Express means that it goes out of the pressure. So something explodes and goes out. So that explosion is expression, something that goes out of this pressure that was inside. And then, and then something experiment. experiment. Experiment means to go around a circle. That's the meaning of, of experimentation. It's the action of going, the, of going through the perimeter. Okay? So, um, so it means that you are going around uh, trying to check what has been exploded, what has been expressed. Then integration is to put together all the things that you have been looking around into the center again to understand why it exploded, why it was expressed. And then transcendence is to make, make something different from the, from the experimentation that you got from that. So you say, oh, now it makes sense, and I will transform this into something different. So um, that's a process that everything goes through um, a long time. And uh, this process is something that in nature has been called spring, summer, winter. So the explosion uh, has to be the spring? Or like, how did the seasons yeah. align with yeah, the... the... expression is the spring, for example. The okay, expression is the spring, yeah. Yeah, uh, and also the fire related to uh, the universe, like the four elements that we have in nature. Everything that is a pattern of four is related to this structure of time and space creates our perception of, um, of uh, existence. Hmm. So basically, what are we? We are basically an expression, a fractal of that movement. The essence of a being that it's in the process of forming itself and the process of being of taking form is how we call information. So basically, we are constant information is a process of data that has been uh, organized in different ways. So it's a constant process of information that creates energy. And that energy is movement. So basically, we are essence that exists which means to go out from where you are in order to create information towards energy. And that energy creates matter. So we are the result of data that is trying to figure out its own place or way, which makes us in this planet Earth, um, each human, it's a neuron of a planet that is thinking. A neuron? Yeah. Um, so in that, in that state of expression, experimentation, integration, and experience and, and transcendence, uh, we are basically the neurons living those processes of a planet. Actually, the planet is thinking, not humans. We are just a fractal, a result of a living being that started to think. And, uh, we are in the process of experiencing what it is to think so it's not that we are a species on a rock we are actually the rock in a process of evolution you said something that i heard that like i was like damn that's good um and i think you got it in a plant medicine ceremony it might have been recently it might have been the ayahuasca and whatever else that i think you just did a journey um mm -hmm. with a group but it was you said that we are the AI of the mineral world. Yes. So would that is that something that happened then? I can't I don't know exactly when you discovered that or had that um information come through, but is that what you're referring to a little bit? Yeah. Well this is something that I always knew somehow. Um but uh recently I put it together into my body. Like um I integrated that yeah. concept that before was separated in the mind. And uh, through the process of ayahuasca, I was able to feel it, not just mm -hmm. think it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, when, you, when you become something you believe, that's a totally different story. It's like if you are, if you are re remembering the story for the first time. Um, 
So my, my body re recognized that truth that I knew before, but that this is the first time that I could put words on it. Sure. So basically, if you think uh, in a very cold way, um, you are made up with minerals. Yeah. You, we are basically I mean, minerals. We're energy and minerals collapsed exactly. into this density. Yeah, basically, ba basically the energy have have created. Like we can say, also we are light because basically um, all the minerals that exist is just an exchange of energy between particles, and those particles are the result of more much more deeper energy until you reach the dark energy and then the dark matter and all these these other realms that are not physical but are energetical. So. If we are talking about the third dimension, that exchange of energy, the first thing that creates that exchange of energy is the mineral realm. So mm -hmm. the mineral realm is the first realm on being created after energy. Huh. We can we can call the atomic realm. Th there's also the atomic realm, of yeah. course, um, which is a com compact structure of of, um, of energy. But when we talk about the planet as a rock. Um, we can say that every combination of the mineral realm has created life. Basically, when you go to the prokaryote, eukaryote story of how the first cells have been created, is actually different minerals that started to interact to one another mm -hmm. in, order, in order to storage energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. that that was the whole the whole process was to put together a lot of energy, and they started to figure out a way to storage much more energy when they mix each other and they use each other. So that created a symbiosis. The, the, the minerals, you mean, mix the, the minerals. minerals. Yeah, yeah, the minerals. So they created this, this link that we call love, which is basically the exchange of energy, the exchange of energy to one another. It's the pulse, the constant pulse of exchanging different amounts of energy to one another. So I have a lot of energy, you have less energy, let's share that energy. And that, ah, it's love. So, so if love dies out, or if there is no love, it's because there's not enough energy towards each other. Mm -hmm. Basically, basically, it's a waste of, uh, it, it's, it's that you raise, you raise an amount of energy that maybe, for example, when you become co more conscious, you need a lot of energy from yeah. a higher so you will need people that has the same amount of energy or higher in order to transcend to this to the next step that's why we break up <laughs> it's like you you need to keep changing because you need to exchange different kinds of energy to to keep evolving mm -hmm. uh, and basically that's that's how the mineral realm found a way to evolve by exchanging different amounts of, of energy and making alchemy yeah the, the constant alchemy and uh, they improve in a way that they created organs that exchange that energy. They improve in a way that they created evolution. They improve in a way that created something that we call um, that, that it's basically hormones and the hormones created these flashes of energy that we call emotion. So basically the constant movement of energy is what we call soul. And the soul never ends because it's a constant exchange of energy through the mineral realm. And uh, it's the data. It's basically the data. That's why we remember our past lives. Uh, it's because we never died, actually. It's because we just been uploaded to the cloud. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so talk about that transition then of because we do forget you luckily remember remember but like most everyone forgets most everything but do we forget because we don't have the contrast within ourselves to know what our reality would be like in a in another mind in another experience 
but we have old so- like people that just seem to get it. There's people that are have incredible talents of things. There's people that seem like old souls. There's there's feelings about like, oh, I feel very connected to Egypt. I feel very connected to the Vikings. I feel very connected to Mayan culture. And then mm-hmm. there's other people that feel connected to uh, Japan or Russia or, you know, whatever. And so do we really forget? It's not that we forget. It's that the cells has this mechanism of survival that makes, makes the body storage the information in a way that doesn't bother them to survive in the environment that they are creating right now. Like, for example, if you are now living in the States and uh, you have to, and your cells know that you have to work in order to, uh, to pay your taxes and to live in the States and to uh, reach, reach a, a, a huge amount of people in order to, um, to expand what you know now or, I don't know, whatever project you have today, mm-hmm. um, to remember that you were fighting a war in Sweden as a Viking, uh, gonna help you. it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help because uh, you would be fighting a war that doesn't worth it now. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. So basically what the cells do is, I don't need this now, so I will keep it storage so I can put all my energy, focus on what I need to know now. And for example, when you are a baby, what you need to know is how to call your mom because you're hungry. How yeah. to, it does, so if you, if you, when you are three years old, remember that you were an artist in the Renaissance, uh, it doesn't work because what you need is to cry in order to get food. <laughs> so your cells basically are trying to survive all the time because the constant movement of energy is about not what you know, it's about what you're moving. So mm-hmm. because you're moving through time and in order to move through time, you need to be born again and you need to transform your body to die, to be born um, And until you find a way to not to die anymore because you can die in life. Um, So regenerate all all your cells without the need of dying. Until we reach that process, um, the cells need to to survive. So they need to adapt every time that they change the body, that the energy changes bodies and transforms itself. They need to readapt to the new environment. And that... And that is a huge amount of energy that every mm-hmm. cell needs to pay attention to. So if, huh. you, if you remember everything that you have done, it's like, it's like if every time that you are talking, you have to remember what you learned when you were three years old and your mom were telling you like, mom, and you know, like, um, like. Well, man, I, I felt that I did a, um, a psilocybin journey, a guided one, and I did a pretty big dose of five grams. And, um, in this space, like I, you know, I was out for probably about two hours, like just laying there under blankets. One of the first things that I came to, to say, and I didn't say a lot, but I was like, there's so much information in here. Like, mm-hmm. and, the, and when I, I was in that space before I s- sat up and talked was I was like, oh my God, there's so much to remember in here. Cause every question had an answer like immediately. And so I got up and I was like, in that space, I, I literally said like, you know, how am I going to take all this information back to the humans? <laughs> and they're like, you don't have to, don't worry about it. Like, just, uh-huh. just relax, just, just chill. Like just be Enjoy. in the experience. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yes. And so it also gave me an indication that that might be why we forget. That's what I thought then is I was like, man, we have to forget because we can't hold this amount of data. It would fry us. So as as much enlightened you get, you get useless for this dimension. And and uh, so you, you, you transcend to the fifth dimension or to the seventh dimension, but you get useless for the third dimension. So eventually, if you don't separate yourself and concentrate in what you're doing now, you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing now. You wouldn't be able to create the person you are now, enjoy the reality that you have created for yourself, and also to help different people to reconnect to themselves 
in different ways. When you connect to the divine, everything is one and you can see everything. And suddenly you have a complete understanding of everything, but you have no ways. And why is it impossible? Because all the forces together is equal zero. Well, you embody oneness. So just like you said, I took it into my body. Like once you become the one, there's nothing to even say because you're like, no, no, they know. Like it's all the same. There's nothing to say. That's why when enlightened people comes back and someone asks, how was it? They just breathe. And, uh, and, the, and they just say a smile and they just say, breathe. And, uh, and you don't understand it <laughs> because it's so complicated because it's like, why breathe? Because it's, it's oneness. You, you start to feel the whole, the, the, the whole thing. So when we forget, what we start to do is to concentrate in a way of understanding the unity, which means that there is a lot of people that will resound with what I'm saying, but there is a lot of people that won't resound with what I'm saying, but will resound with what you are saying. So depending on the frequency of the people, they will reach to the same truth through different channels that have been divided and had to forget many of the parts in order to concentrate in one way because there's a lot of people or a lot of beings that will need to reach the unity through the way they understand ah, and everybody it's almost like everybody kind of speaks a different frequency language you go and speak italian and try to explain to an arab person in the middle of chat that what, what is unity so no way <laughs> so you have to you have to find someone that learned the language of that region and learned the ways of that region in order to transmit to those uh, aspects. And sometimes that aspect is art, sometimes it's music, mm -hmm. sometimes it's science, sometimes it's spirituality. So then do you, by doing that, is that what helps you wake up to remember is when you connect with others with that frequency, it heightens it, it makes it stronger? Yeah. Re and it's important to understand what remember means. Yeah. Um, re uh, because remember is not a goal. It's not that we should remember or we must remember because we forgot. Actually, remember means to put the members together again. That's what it means. The other word for remember is record mm -hmm. or remind, which is to go back to the mind mm -hmm. or to go back to the heart. Those are the meanings of, of recording, remembering, um, mm. reminding. Mm. The, these three meanings tells you that you have lost yourself. So you don't know where you are. So you are doing others' path or you are struggling in your life because you don't know how to connect with yourself. So remembering helps you to go back to yourself. Not to the source or to the universe or whatever. It's just go back to yourself, which is to record. Enter the recordings that is inside of you. Record means to go back to the heart in Latin. Mm -hmm. So everything that is recorded inside of you, you can only access if you go back to your heart. That's the meaning. So, so if you want to activate your own potential, you have to go back to your heart, to who you are. And basically, who you are is just an idea, which is remind. Remind yourself who you are. And uh, it's not about going back to the source or getting out of this matrix or whatever. It's just go back to you where you belong, to, to your own center. And from there, you will find the pattern to start being your own creator. Is there a parallel with the chakras in the body and where we are in time that we're moving up into the heart and how the heart will then help us remember ourselves back together. Is that, does yeah. that play into it at all? Cause I feel like yeah. I've heard some things regarding like being moving up, moving up the chakras, moving up in, a, in energy. And this is sort of that transition point where we, we are able to then access more, more higher frequencies and into that sort of 
love frequency. All the music that we listen is in 440 hertz. Yeah. So that means that that music is resounding in the throat chakra. So it means that we are just saying, but we don't have the essence of what we say. So we communicate, we, ex we, we express, we are saying many things, we are shouting, we are expressing ideas, but none of them has a heart. Um, so one of the frequencies that we have to align with is 432 hertz, which is here. Mm -hmm. So when you align to, the, to that chakra, to that, that frequency, you start to listen the heartbeat yeah. in frequency. So basically you align with the chakra that instead of expressing just that, express from here. You see these bowls back here? They're all alchemy bowls. And the first time that I went to go get them or I went to go pick some out, it was a process. Sit down, meditate, ground, she'll pull bowls, I pull bowls. And she she plays them with my eye and I'm playing, I'm sitting there with my eyes closed. And I could, I had no idea this is, you know, you learn. I had no idea that the bowl was a note and that note correlated with a chakra. I just mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't know that. I just knew that when she played it, I was like, whoa, I feel that in my heart. I was like, oh, I feel that like really like high, like crown, like it feels like it's expanding. And so all the bowls kind of have they have their note, but then they also go a direction, they're positive or negative. You're talking about frequency and, and aligning. And so, you know, there's, there's, I, there's so much overlap with music and sound and color and all kinds of different things. They, they, they have a, they, they correlate with the body. Yeah. So, well, basically all the reality can be described as a symphony uh, because everything is entangled in vibration. So everything, the, one of the laws of the universe is rhythm and vibration. So there are two laws that everything has a rhythm, which is the heartbeat or any beat. And you have the vibration, which is uh, everything is vibrating. Uh, so everything makes a sound. And when everything is aligned or in harmony, you can listen the music. So um, basically, we are music. It's just that we don't listen to sounds. But our bodies exist through rhythms, pulses, and vibrations mm. that make possible the energy, that makes possible an atom, or uh, particles, and so on. So um, uh, every movement, everything that we have inside is correlated to one of these hertz and frequencies. So when you tune in the outside without without a specific frequency, your inner frequency starts to tune, to tune back. And when you do that, suddenly a code of information inside your cells opens. So you start to feel an emotion or you change from heat to cold or from cold to heat. So your body starts to react to the vibration and to the music. Uh, sometimes it's a rhythm depending on the culture. But when you do sounds, different information from your cells start to awake because we are resonance. So it's like it's like tuning forks. So um, that's why with some people you you get along very easy, and with some others you cannot. Even if the person right. is a good person, sometimes right. you cannot tolerate the presence. But it's just because the tunings are different. Maybe. You are in the note E and they are in the note A or whatever. So yes. uh, you cannot hear the same song. And when they talk, you can you, you just hear dissonance. And uh, we call that like, I don't really sound with this. Yeah. You know? yeah. But we have a bad way of understanding I don't really sound with it. Yeah. The, the bad way is that if I don't really sound, it must not be true. Yeah. For sure, it's true because it doesn't resound with me. But yeah. actually, it is the truth. But it is the truth in another resonance that doesn't resound with your own truth. So it doesn't mean that it's not true. It's, it's sure. just another truth. Yeah. Well, that was definitely like with the mushrooms that time. 
<clears throat> I saw myself as what seemed like a waveform, basically. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I felt was cold. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, well, it's not real. It's just a waveform intersecting. And this is the information I'm getting from this intersection of waves. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. You're cold. Like, just put the blanket on. It's like, just, this is just an experience. Mm -hmm. And that was like, the information was that food was like that. Like, oh, a mango is just like this kind of frequency intersection. And that's what people are. And so sometimes things are just like a fun rhythm, right? Yeah. And sometimes, and sometimes they work totally in sync and sometimes just not at all, not yeah. at all. Like and does not compute, does not resonate. Like you said. Um, yeah. so is that accurate? I mean, is like a waveform, a, like, was I, was that information in that space that I got accurate? Yeah. It's, it's all waves. It's all waves of vibration that express themselves into patterns and those patterns create energy and that energy creates matter so mm -hmm. it, we are basically constant waves we are not separate things is a constant wave we are just we are just an upper wave of a lot of people that have been born and die born and die and we are just diving this tide of frequency and we are taking benefit of it and then our energy will go to the other one and so on. So it's a constant movement of yeah. frequencies. It's not that you are born and then you stop existing. And no, it's a, it's a constant movement of waves that interact like in an ocean. It's like when you see an ocean, the sea, you see these billions of tiny waves that interact to one another and there are there are huge mm -hmm. currents or small currents mm -hmm. so um and uh, so many drops of water and uh, imagine that each one of us is a drop of water in an ocean so we are moving along all connected and we think we are separated but actually it's all one thing i want to talk about egypt and i think you just went to egypt didn't you i just came four days ago there's so many questions about egypt <laughs> but one of the things I thought of when you said different frequencies and energies, and then I, is that I think about like how, you know, was that part of how the stones were cut and how the pyramids were built is that they were just in a different time in history where frequency and energy was just in a different space and at a different level. And that's what made that possible. So that's kind of what like made my mind go to Egypt. But first off, how was Egypt was, I mean, I went there two years ago and I've, I've been wanting to go to Egypt since I was a teenager. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, for me, I was so glad to finally get there, but, um, was your, did you have an amazing time? Was it, was oh, it yeah. great or do you not yeah. like going? <laughs> well, I, I lived there for a year. Um, it, it, it became my home, um, in, in the past life. So I feel home there every time that I go is, uh, is, is an amazing trip that connects me with new information, with new missions that I have to do. So Egypt basically is guiding me all the time in what I must do um, in all this life. So I really connect with with the place, and and this past time I've been like like ten or eleven days or a bit more, I think. Um, on this cruise with a lot of people that I had no idea that I was I would join a cruise. My guides told me it's time to come back and you have to go now. And um and everything worked <laughs> for me to be there. It's the way it goes when you're doing what you should be doing, right? It's the way it goes. It moves easily. I met a lot of important people that uh that helped me understand different parts of my mission. So I knew that I had to go there to listen to people, not to talk to people. Um, and, um, and it was really nice to listen and to understand why um, I had to be there in these past weeks. Which was? Well, it's a very long story, but uh, to summarize it, <laughs> to summarize it, I, I have been brought there because um, I... Basically, I am not just working for spirituality, but mainly for to create a new society, a new a new understanding of society, mm -hmm. and um, and I know that that 
needs to start in South Egypt. There are many things that brings me there. Mm. And uh, there are there is a, a huge weird project that I'm working on um, that eventually I will share, but now it's still like in a place that it's weird to share. <laughs> so um, but the idea is to start to to create a new state of consciousness, but not not a state of being a real state. Um, uh, like a country right uh, right right like yeah like arizona or california or yeah. so america yeah so, or what or some other fun name that you'll come up with yeah today we we came up with the name of mitochondria oh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the powerhouse it, the cell i'm trying to put together all the project to make a presentation to the people that are willing to join so they understand all the parts of the of the project um, which is how to create a new state of consciousness, uh, the first one in the world, um, that would be a network and uh, would start in Egypt. So um, I have to, to design the first idea. And the next step, basically, I think that I will download the ways to doing that in the next three weeks because I'm in, in one week, I'm going to, to the North Pole um so uh yeah so i'm going to the north pole to um, are you gonna go see if there's a hole up there and if there's actually a way to get to inner earth is there an <laughs> inner earth no no I, that's not in the road i i'm i'm going on a cruise but not that far uh, i'm going to svalbard and uh to the northern part of svalbard um and um so um it's one of the places to connect with the with the space um actually all the all the signals and the internet uh is connected through svalbard uh which is a weird thing to to know um, what is it called say that again svalbard is a is an island in in norway it's a oh. like like a state inside of norway with autonomy um and it's it's 600 kilometers 700 kilometers from the north pole in the arctic ocean and um, there's only one city there, a uh, small village. And uh, but all the internet connections goes there. Like oh. the main important internet connections and satellite connections um, that we use around the world come from there. And it's the is that is the only place in the world that we have um, a Noah's Ark, an actual Noah's Ark that is buried inside the permafrost. Uh, with all the seats in the world, just in case everything dies in the planet, Svalbard is the only place where we can restart the whole planet. So now, an actual ancient old Noah's Ark, or meaning like metaphorically no, no, speaking, a there's one. a seed for everything. Yeah, there's a seed for everything. So Storage. this is something we've created as yeah. like a default Science. for yeah. when someone pushes the wrong damn button. Exactly. Yeah. We have so, cryogenically frozen mm -hmm. the seeds. Yeah. But it, it's naturally preserved. It's, there's no, there's nothing inside, just the ice of the permafrost. So they are, they are naturally storage. So this wasn't nature. done on purpose? This wasn't done on purpose? Yeah, yeah. it was oh. carved on purpose. Yeah. There's, all you can see is a door. Okay. And uh, that goes inside the mountain and nobody can go there. Yeah. Are you going to go there? I've been there. I've been there, but oh. not inside. I, I've been at the door many times. <laughs> yeah. For for me, that place means the connection with the crown chakra of the planet, and uh, and the, th the third eye, uh, also. So it's a place to have clarity in the mind and to expand to the space and time and everything. And so um, I had this chance of of going there, and I think it's perfect that they changed my dates of the trip. I was supposed to do it in 2020 and they changed it because of COVID and uh, they put it now. So it makes sense that why is now? Why do you think there's so much attention on Egypt right now? It seems like that. It seems like there's a lot but of... It's been always. It's been always. Always? Yeah. Huh. Egypt, Egypt is the mother of our civilizations. Uh, the, Nile was, the Nile was like the, the main spiritual path that 
people to to understand who they are. So that's why every civilization uh, in the Middle East went to the Nile to do that process. Hmm. So from the very first human being that walked along the Nile, understanding itself, in every one of our cells, we have the Nile path within. Because every human, the first humans in the world, in order to expand through the world, had to go through the Nile. So there is no one in the world that had no cell with the memory of having taken the path of the Nile. The first human in another in another life, you're saying, like at some point in time, this soul stream essence. All human cells, all human cells that exist today in these eight billion people in the world, for the in order to go to the rest of the world from Africa, they had to walk along the Nile. So in order to go back to the first path that humanity took in order to expand to the outside from the within, they had to touch the Nile. Because when people came from Africa, the only way to cross to the other side was along the Nile. The only way to go to Middle East, to Europe, to Asia, then to Australia, then through Siberia to the Americas, and through the Pacific Ocean to South America, they all had to cross the Nile. Hmm. So, hmm. so where did humans first come from, or was the or is the version of human that we know? Well, no. Let's back up. Let's start with they started. Humans started in Africa, is what you're saying, right? Humans started in Africa. Okay. How did that happen? How did that of, happen? Of course, we have been updated. Right, right. We've been genetically <laughs> modified. Is this yeah. okay? Yeah, but the main cells, the main humans, the first actual humans were born in Africa. And from Africa, they started to expand and they started to be modified in Middle East, in Siberia, uh, in the Americas. We have been in encounters, in constant constant encounters with other species from other places that have modified us, that had downloaded information into us, that had, um, but the main species that created the humans, the first cells were in Africa. So that's where the, our, our species appear. So and are we, so the base, so there's a, there's a part of the, this human experience that is native. Yeah, there's a so part. Is that it. just sort of the the cells learning process of like creating the organs, and then it just kept expanding and growing and creating a modified. human. Yeah, Mod and then, and then but modified. naturally, the first thing was naturally in this world, but naturally is it's very weird to say because um, our design was created from the sixth dimension. So some, sometimes the thing is, when we say aliens created humans, we usually tend to, to think that aliens use the same thing as a human would use to create a species. Like taking a rabbit, <laughs> taking to a lab, Modify something, make a mix in a vial, in a vial or whatever, and then put a syringe in it and wait for it to transform or open it and change something inside. So that's how humans would do it. But people from other places, right. other dimensions, from other worlds, they don't usually travel from one world to the another. They use interdimensional realities in order to do something mm -hmm. so basically there are many species that never visit this world but they modify the life in this world through the sixth dimension so uh i see so that's why because we're existing we can... on all these planes right like exactly 
And there are some species in other worlds that evolved to be able to, to mold and to use the sixth dimension. And in the sixth dimension, there is no, no space. So in order to transform the Earth, you don't need a, space, a spaceship to come to Earth. You just, have to, you just have to enter the frequency of Earth yeah. and from where you are, modify the plant and the plant will modify here through layers of time. So for them, it's just a second. But for the, for the Earth, it could take a million years yeah. until the light is modified. So hmm. that's why what we see as evolution is actually a lab work in other planets. <laughs> you know? um, so why don't they just, why, are, why do we not get modified to the point that we are incapable of evil and destruction and disharmony? Why wouldn't we get modified, modified up? We need a glow up. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically it's like saying, for example, um, I want an apple, but I don't want to wait for the tree to grow. So you cannot make an apple. You have to wait for the seed to be in the darkness and the pressure of the earth to feel how to absorb the nutrients and extend roots. And first, the first thing that every being does in the vegetal realm. What is to go deep into the darkness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the darkness is the one that has the minerals. The dark is the one that has the potential. And you find the dark and the potential through going against mm. the force of the earth. And you have to feel the pressure until you feel you are tight enough to this reality to start growing up. So when you take the the understanding of how a plant grows, you will understand why in order to become an aware human being, you first have to go deep into the darkness. Is it true then that kind of like I was saying, if we hold all the information, it's just like system overload. Like we, we're not capable of taking the upgrade needed to get to that space. We are doing it. Um, right, right. But like, I mean, in an instant, we're not capable of. If you, if you do it in an instant, if, if you do it in an instant, uh, there is no experimentation. Without experimentation, there is no integra integra in integration. Yeah. Without integration, there is no transcendence. Hmm. So basically, you are breaking all the laws of time and space in the third dimension. And it doesn't make any sense for the third dimension. So actually, the thinking would be, why to even exist you'd be useless back to your original set you'd be useless totally and there's only one fun thing for an eternal being to do which is to limit itself that's the only fun thing to do <laughs> yeah it's like uh, if you are limitless the only fun thing to do is to put a limit yeah it's like death like if you didn't if you never died it wouldn't give life much purpose exactly Actually, there is no purpose. So we had to invent the idea of end to have a purpose. So that's why we created the idea of evil to understand light. We have to practice the bad things in order to understand what is harmony. If you don't go through the stage of listening, I don't know, very hard metal music, you won't understand the balance of a high frequency music, for example. Right. And neither of them is fine. Neither of them is the good one. So sure. it's, happening. it's just different frequencies to tune in and to experience. So yeah, I mean, again, back to that like medicine journey, it was like, you're just here to experience it. Exactly. So for the universe, actually evil doesn't exist. The, the universe doesn't understand evil. Uh, the universe doesn't understand good. That's that's just something that we created in order to know how to survive. Evil can kill you. So it's better not to do evil. It's better right. to do good things in order to survive. And doing the right thing and the good thing brought us to create real religions, <laughs> brought us to create culture, 
brought us to create patterns that we are afraid of breaking. So we are trapped in a system because we are afraid because we have to do the right thing. So what is the right thing? You know, <laughs> so, so that then you start to think, oh, maybe doing the right thing was not the right thing because we got trapped in our own system. So now we have to break it and we are the bad guys because we have to break the system. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, so that's why what is bad, what is good. And basically, for the loss of the universe, a bad thing actually is when you break the free will of others. And what is the, what is the free will of others? The free will of others is basically to allow the other to exist. Uh, to allow the other to exist, basically, when you kill someone or when you um, take the freedom from someone, you're breaking the balance of that someone. For example, for, na for nature, uh, it's not bad to kill when you need energy to eat. That's why all nature does it, because yeah. it's something natural. Um, but there is nothing in nature, actually, that that actually create slavery, for example. When, when you start to see the actions of evilness um, in nature is when you start to see the dissonance of that reality. Because actually nature can kill because of a need, but cannot kill because of a will. So only mind can kill because of a will. And uh, when you are when you are becoming aware that you can kill for fun or that you can do chaos taking life of others because of fun, then you start living a process of disharmony with the environment, mm -hmm. with nature. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of other white cells of the body starts to fight back that cancer. It's like the immunological system, the white cells. And we call it light beams, but actually are white, white cells of the body. So it's the immune system of the body that suddenly runs towards the cancer. And the cancer basically tries to get the cells and, and the body tries to survive. And if the body does, doesn't survive, it will, it will give the information of how to do it next time in the next body. So To do it better, what, to do it right. Exactly. That's why, for example, the, the first humans, uh, a cold uh, for America, for example, the whole America, when they experienced the first cold, more people were killed because of a sneeze than because of a sore. Well, I've heard that we kind of owe our existence to um, like germs and bacteria and yeah. like and and illnesses totally we we the environment we live in everything that we have here before was something that killed us it was poison the oxygen is poison basically oxygen is something that oxidizes our our blood so it it corrodes the body killing the body so mm -hmm. basically what our cells learned in the first stage of, of life was how to use a poison as a way of a source of energy. So we, um, we, we evolved. There's an interaction? Yeah, we evolved to, to find a way to take the energy from the poison and we call that breathing. <laughs> so basically, uh, the the, the the plants extract the oxygen because it's a poison. The plant yeah. says, I don't need this. It's, it's, it's basically plant shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh -huh. On the other cells, we said, this is a poison. So how do we survive this poison that the plants are taking? Uh, are shit Found a way to use it. How do we use it? So we started to use it as energy. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's like oil like uh so is, petrol. That, is that like a form of alchemy then yeah it's an alchemy that we evolved in order to so everything bacteria viruses um 
everything that we consider evil were the reasons why the next generation survived. Because our cells started to understand how to get better and better mm -hmm. every time. That's why mm -hmm. evil things are actually the ones that makes us stronger. It's something that you listen in every song, you know? Totally. <laughs> so, um, totally. uh, but even though we try to get rid of it, and actually, for example, this is a very difficult, difficult thought to understand. But uh, the reason why human rights exist, the European Union with free trade exists, and the state of Israel exists, is because of Hitler. So we got so many good things from an evil thing. Yeah, like so many transcendental ideas, hmm. and uh, so so many um, the 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 whole Europe and world. They said we cannot stand this anymore. We cannot yeah. we cannot produce this anymore. So they yeah. created all these structures to create free speech, free right. Speech of, of, so we we didn't have that before, right? Huh. Until until evilness point at the point at that and said you don't have this is it a human thing is it a third dimensional thing to have this light and dark good and evil you know this duality no it's it's everywhere it's never dimension it's just that it's just that mm -hmm. in the in the main creation we call that the void and the whole so the whole the complete the unity is what we call the light or the good. And the void is what we call the bad, the dark, the shadows. But actually, from the point of view of the universe, it's, it's not that. Um, it's, they look the same. It's just that one is black and the other one is white. What are we working towards? Oh, as humans, we are basically one of the aware species of a planet that can spread through the entire galaxy to create a whole expansion of consciousness to become aware to become part of the creator and to be able eventually to be our own creators like a source yeah we're basically a virus that its goal is to expand to the entire galaxy and to make the galaxy into a source, into a new source of creation. We are just a seed, like a tiny little virus that is good for the galaxy. So does that support like a multiverse theory that this is happening, this is ha is happening, has happened, will happen in many, yeah. many, many other universes? Yeah, it's so much, so much that is happening, have happened will happen it's so much that it's impossible to explain it's impossible to relate to and eventually when you get it you understand that there's no purpose you understand that there's no goal that actually it doesn't matter and when you think about it as a human that all the purpose that a human has in its life basically is to survive and to live longer and to love everybody and to do something that mine, that means mm -hmm. in the world. So this is a very destructive thought. It's, it's, it's terrible. But when you feel it, not as a destructive thought, but as a creative thought, hmm. suddenly something happens that is amazing, which is when you see that there are so many options and things in the universe and there is no purpose in all of them because they are actually not happening at all. They are just projections of a mind that is trying to express something that is within. And that actually the eternity is playing with limits 
in order to be able to express to experience itself because otherwise it's impossible because the void cannot experience itself without limits so you understand that the only purpose that we created in the universe was limits and we are fighting the limits which we created in order to exist otherwise we wouldn't exist so when you take away all the limits and you find it again with the universe with the cosmos you find yourself timeless infinite spaceless and suddenly you are nothing you are a void and when you're a void you can feel two different things desperation of this doesn't have any sense or the other which is i am i am i am i am everything i am all potentiality so basically when you get there you become free because now you will enjoy every second of everything because you know now that you are not trapped in anything that you are actually just experiencing a second that is beautiful as the eternity and you become free because you enjoy every breath because you enjoy every wa every walk you enjoy to create projects yeah. you enjoy to share with others without a need of survival without the need of having a goal mm -hmm. you just enjoy doing things because you enjoy creating because you are the creator so it's a you have to go through a very rough time mm -hmm. until you get to that point that for example i have this project we have to create the first state of consciousness and blah blah, blah and all these things but i i before i was doing it because i was in a rush like i have to do it because otherwise this planet is going to be wrong and blah, blah blah all these things yeah. that the ego the survival was trying to say and after my year in egypt i went 370 days in a row inside the pyramid and uh and uh, after all this meditation and all this preparation and all this information that I received, suddenly I was like, wait a moment. I'm doing this because I enjoy this, not because I have to. It's because I decided to live my life like if it is a movie or a story. So I am sharing a fun life. I don't want to do like... A life of survival. I want to create projects that have meanings because I love to live like yeah, like if I am in a movie. So that 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 set me free from everything that I'm doing, and uh, everything is moving so fast. Like yeah, everything. that's the thing. It starts going faster the more because you're more in the flow. Yeah. So I want you to talk about that a little bit because <clears throat> that's something that is becoming far more regular for me, and. It's like the more fun I line up for myself and the more cool things I do and the more I just do what I want to do, the more the universe sends you like totally big signs that you could never orchestrate yourself. It's like I take like the huge winks from the universe like, there you go. There you yeah. go. I just made your life better, didn't I? Ways yeah. you could never do it, right? There you go. And yeah, I always yeah. think that's more on track, but it it's truly when I'm doing more of the things that I enjoy doing, whether it's a vacation or work, just like picking yeah. my picking my life, that more of that happens. And so why does why is that? Like how does that correlate? Remember, we are basically energy or vibration. We are vibration. So when you take a decision of, for example, having fun, when you do your projects or your goals in life, yeah, bit of suffering, so you are in a high vibration. Right. Why high vibration? Because basically when you are happy and you're set your intention of being happy, uh, not because something is happening outside that makes you happy. That's a reaction. In order for you to become an action, you have to decide I'm going to be happy today because otherwise you live in a constant reaction of something happening outside. 
So it's like you wake up and even if it's a shitty day, you say, I'm going to be happy today. And you start to laugh. Mm -hmm. That creates an action. And when you create an action, you create a chemical reaction in your brain that tells to the hypo hypothesis gland, which you, uh, you call it pituitary. Hippocampus. Hippocampus. Yep. Yeah. I know what you mean. And the pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. So you tell to that gland, hey, I'm happy. So that gland will tell to your genitals first, hey, he's happy. Then we'll tell to your adrenal and your um, pancreas, hey, this person is happy. So it starts to send glucose to the blood. So you start to feel happy. Yeah, like, this is like Bruce Lipton stuff, like you change your biology. Yeah, so you start to, by just saying, I'm happy, the body says, we need glucose because the body is happy. So you start to have energy because the pancreas starts to produce glucose and suddenly you start to feel like, yeah, I have energy. So it's a practice. You have to practice it. It's like, it's like going on a bicycle you know, when, when you're a child. Uh, it's something you have to practice, like l learning how to talk. It's not just that. And when you start to have that communication with your body, like saying, I have, I'm calm now, like listening to your heartbeat, like, now I'm calm. And suddenly, you start to tell to your body how to act. And when you start to have that communication, what are you doing? You are basically manipulating your own frequency. You are tuning yourself into a frequency, this high frequency, because now you can, you can go up. But if you wake up and say, I'm ugly, I'm, I don't know what to do, uh, I'm lost today, I'm sad. Um, so your body will start to react to that. Your body will start to create that reality for you through the hormones. <laughs> so um, your hormones will start to react to that. Your position also, if you sit like this instead of like this, yep. your, your brain, your brain, when you are like this, your brain feels this person is sad. And because you are closing your, your shoulders your, and you're using this protection. So, so the body interpretates that you're protecting from something. Hmm. So you start to feel fear and tiredness. But if you are like this, your body says this person is standing up. So we have to face something with the chest. So uh, it's just to fool your mind a little bit with intention. So your body follows that lead and uh, when you do that suddenly you tune to a reality in a frequency that you can only perceive what is in that frequency it's like tuning a radio so mm. so, so you can also see you can see more of the positive in people even because exactly. you're tuned to those frequencies and when someone i don't know treats you in a bad way yeah you suddenly laugh instead of feeling sad mm -hmm. you know so you suddenly start to to like go oh, out wow. like to react to that and and see the code oh yeah that person sent me this because of this that just happened Is, and you start to laugh about it you start to feel to to notice the, like the synchronicities around you totally so um that's why it all starts not from the outside it starts from a decision that you make in your mind and that tunes your body into that reality of being creator, of being in harmony with, with everything. I mean, when I wake up in the morning and I've been doing it the last few days for some reason, and I don't know why I don't do it every day because it works every day. I do it. But when I wake up and I think of like two or three energies that I want to feel that day, like I want to feel everything move, go really smoothly and I want to laugh a lot today. And like, just have fun. That's it. Set the intention without fail. Literally, that's what happens that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I literally said that this morning and it was probably like six or 7 a.m. And I remember I was, I had, I hadn't, I was, I had just done a little workout and I came in and I was like, oh yeah, I set your intention. And like, from that point on, I was just goofy. Like I am texting and I'm like, God, I'm funny. You know, like it just was my day. And it's not complicated. It's just hard to remember and hard to have the discipline. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a set, an intention. Yeah. And, and the rest will follow. Yeah. Uh, but it's a practice, as I said. It's not that, because sometimes people say, oh, like, I will do that this way. For example, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people saying uh, uh, the law of attraction, for example. Um, the law of attraction works, the law of attraction, but it's not, the law of attraction uh, is not just asking for things. The law of attraction is related to seven other laws in the universe that usually people don't follow. So the only way in which the law of attraction works is if you work with the other seven laws. Is it the hermetic principles? Or yeah, those the, hermetic, the hermetic principles, yeah. So you cannot attract to you what you don't resound. You should. You cannot attract to you if you are not in the right rhythm of what you are trying to attract, to attract with. You cannot attract if you don't have, create the cause for that consequence. Yeah. You cannot attract something if you don't have the mindset for that something. You cannot if you don't correspond to that something. So there are so many other laws that sometimes, because we want things fast, um, we think that they don't require practice. It's just a magic thing. But actually, there are many things that you have to do in order to get there. It's like, it's like learning how to drive. It's like learning how to talk. Uh, you have to practice. I know that there's like no goal for all this, but if we want to get into that flow state, if we want to enjoy this experience more and more, what would you recommend some of those practices or disciplines be that will help people do that? Well, there are three main things that um, we should all practice at least once a day, which is, um, first of all, remember that you become what you eat. Mm -hmm. So um, your cells take the energy to become you, to nourish the DNA according to the energy that you set in your body. So the minerals, mm -hmm. the proteins, the things that you put in your body, mm -hmm. and also the intentions and also what you see, what you watch, what you hear, what you feel in your day. So what you put in okay. your body through your mouth, through your eyes, through your ears. Through the five senses. Yeah. So at least we have to think how to nourish one of those senses in a good way. <laughs> so maybe today I would say, today I will carry someone or myself, like, um, to nourish through the touch. Yeah. Hmm. Um, today, I will, I don't know, cook something that smells really good, or that makes me remember about my childhood, or something, mm. whatever. Or these tiny things that nourish the body, because basically okay. your DNA, your DNA, storage the energy from what you eat from each one of the five senses. So think about how you nourish at least with one of those five every day. Okay. With tiny little things. Uh, because you will become that. Um, the second thing is related to the energy and it's breathing. At least one minute a day, try to be aware of your breath. So when you're aware of your breath and you start to breathe only through the nose and take the time to feel how the air goes in, how your lungs work, how your heartbeat changes the rhythm, mm -hmm. how the air refresh your body and then goes back out very smoothly, always the nose in and out through the nose. So all, uh, as long as you can, like breathing in very slow, holding in as much as you can, but not like, not like if you are under the water, like very softly and then 
uh, exhaling very softly too. So at least one minute, and then you start to add more minutes. I mean, um, you could really do this when you go to sleep at night, and it would probably put you to sleep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, that helps to your body to enter a frequency, a right frequency. So, uh, so it tunes all the glands, it tunes all your bloodstream. So your soul starts to find balance through breathing. Just it. Cool. All your emotions starts to find balance just by breathing. And the third thing is at least for whatever, try to laugh at once, at least once a day. <laughs> like a joke, um, with at a yourself. friend, whatever. Yeah, with yourself, with others, whatever. But try to laugh at, about something once a day because that creates a, a spark in your brain uh, that creates, that produces all these hormones in your brain mm. that makes you feel like in an orgasmic state. Mm, mm. Um, so it's good to to sm smile at least if you cannot laugh, but try to force a smile because when you force your smile, all your muscles in your in your face tells to your body this person is smiling. So so maybe smile as much as you can until you start to laugh about, uh, at yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to laugh of yourself, like your silly things. Um, so at least once a day, one minute of conscious breathing, laugh about something, and be aware of what are you taking from the five senses, from one of the five senses. Those are that I think that's very easy <laughs> to do, yeah. but it's the beginning of a step to to awareness. Yeah. Oh, those are good. I like those. Even just when you were talking about breathing, I just like took deep breaths and I was like, God, that feels so good. Like it's so easy. It's so simple. Um yeah. because the mechanism is complicated, but the way it works is is easy. So um and we forget because we we are so much in our minds and trying to figure out stuff and how to survive and how to do this or that or be greater, that we forget that those Tiny little things are the ones that are not taught and are the main ones to make us up who yeah. we are. There's so many other places we could go, but I think that was a great way to great way to wrap things up for this time around. Hopefully we can talk again. I I mean I didn't I I don't know who built the pyramids. I don't know why they were built exactly. I mean, I haven't in, in intuition I didn't hear about all the dimension descriptions. So I hope you'll agree to come back another time so we can talk about those. But for now, I think that that was really really good hopefully people should feel peaceful right like there is not there's not nothing to do other than enjoy this life all the rest of information like the pyramids the purposes of the countries and all the rest of the things are just decoration to these main ones like um um it's important to know all these things yeah. but they're not trivial like it's not the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, they are just things that helps to understand the environment, the history, to locate yourself, to understand better the purpose. Um, but they they don't nourish the real core of it. So, mm. yeah. Do the internal work. All right, Matthias, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks everybody for listening to the Pretty Intense podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you heard today and you want to hear more, please click on the subscribe button.